like to thank every one of you for coming out here today. I've seen so many good friends and familiar faces and some new faces that are eager to learn about mind control. Knowledge is our only defense against mind control, and you certainly have a right to this information and a need, and it's your need to know. Mind control is the most important issue facing humanity today. All other issues, causes, choices, and electives are contingent upon our free thought. We all formulate our, our thoughts and our actions based on what we know. And we need to know that that knowledge base has been altered. It's been deliberately suppressed for decades. Superstition begins where knowledge leaves off. And superstition is so rampant these days that it's very obvious that knowledge has been suppressed for way too long. We've got to raise awareness. We've got to bring up our knowledge base. With knowledge our only defense against mind control and awareness the only solution, we have a ways to go to realize what's happening in our society today, to know what we can do about the environment, violence, technological advancements, suppression of information, and what we can do to expand our own minds beyond what we thought we knew. So many times, people feel like, oh, I've got the answer now, and wrap up all their knowledge and all their information and put it in a box. Knowledge doesn't fit in a box. It's not that simple. There's always more to learn. There's always more to know. And it's up to every one of us to be able to expand our minds and consider the reality that mind control is rampant in our societies and is affecting all walks of life. I'm extremely fortunate to have survived my MK Ultra mind control ordeal, to be lovingly rescued by Mark Phillips, deprogrammed, and reach this point and being able to speak out and tell you what I witnessed and experienced behind the scenes of what Adolf Hitler and George Bush termed the New World Order. My experience as a mind control slave on a White House Pentagon level was extreme. I was totally robotic. I had no capacity to think for myself. I didn't have any free thought whatsoever. I didn't even have an, the ability to question, to reason, or consciously comprehend what I was involved in. With no comprehension, no conscious awareness, I had no, no understanding of time. I didn't know how much time was passing. I didn't know how old I was. And it certainly put me in a realm where I didn't have the kind of awareness necessary to be able to deal with the realities that I was experiencing. I've come a long way from the kind of robotic mind control that I experienced. And even though my experience is extreme and, and pretty horrific in, in many regards, the fact remains that mind control is a sliding scale. And we all experience some form of mind control or another, whether it's information control that's absolutely controlling our perceptions, our abilities to respond, allowing for that superstition to creep in. And superstition so often renders us totally helpless to affect a situation. I'm very much a solution-oriented person. I, I definitely believe in solutions. 
And I spell solutions with an S-O-U-L. It takes soul, and it takes love, and it takes the ability to expand beyond what we thought we knew. The solutions are so exciting. I, could, I would much rather spend the whole time today talking about the solution aspect of it because I'm real excited where we can go with the information that has been suppressed for so long. I believe I believe we've all learned at some point, or been told at some point, that we use about 10% of our brain. That leaves a whole lot of our brain that we get to know about, that we get to learn about. The criminals in control of our government, and control of our information and our technology, have been suppressing the information on mind-brain function in order to control all of us by what we don't know. Secret knowledge equals power. And they're using that power to control each and every one of us. To put us in a position to have to rely on superstition. And when we rely on superstition, so often that puts us in a fearful position. And people get very fearful these days. When in fact, we're right at a turning point right on the verge of the most exciting and wonderful possibilities that humanity could ever, ever face. I feel so fortunate to have come from the extreme mind control, to have seen what the criminals have been doing for, for decades and for generations behind the scenes of the political, global effort, to see people beginning to wake up. To see the New World Order effort beginning to crumble to the point where these criminals are scrambling and working as fast as they can to make the difference while they can. They know that they're out of time. And now it's up to all of us to be able to grasp the information and spread the word, wake up our brothers and sisters, because this is our time and change is occurring. When we expand our thought, it's like we're opening our minds to a new dimension of thought. To be able to realize that we have within our own brains the capacity for self-healing, for discernment of truth, when we can discern truth, it's going to alleviate a whole lot of the, the problems that, that people are having dealing with fear and superstition and, and panic and, and everything else these days. When we can discern the truth, it will indeed make all of us free. We do have that capacity. We have a capacity to be able to stop the violence in the school systems, to stop the erosion of the... The, the planet that's happening right now, I'm deeply concerned about the ecological issues that are coming to light. We have the capacity to make differences for our planet and for our own selves and to advance our own spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical evolution. This is a wonderful, wonderful time to be alive. But before we can implement solutions, the problem must be identified first, and it must be clearly identified. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, is what I saw, what I experienced behind the, the, the scenes of the New World Order effort, what is actually happening through the manipulation of the minds of the masses, the fact that so many people are under total robotic mind control, and so many walks of life, from the intelligence community, politics, special forces, military, it's even in sports and entertainment. Mind control is very far reaching and the one that disturbs me personally the most where my own passion is, is in the school systems where our children's minds are being manipulated. Adolf Hitler said 
that if there were any free thinkers left in Nazi Germany, he was not concerned because he had the minds of the children through the education system. I heard that quote when I worked under Education Secretary Bill Bennett during the Reagan administration, and it was a plan that was put into place and being used in the school systems. It's one that's based on the same kind of concept that the military was conditioned with. It was determined that only 15% of the people could point and shoot at their enemy in a combat situation. 15% was not considered a sufficient number for the warfare that was being waged. So the military wanted to up that number, and the way they found to do it was to manipulate the minds of the soldiers to where they had to bypass that critical analysis, where there couldn't be that moment of thought that this is another human being, and what am I fighting for? You know, to bypass any of the kind of questions and critical thought that could come into play. So the military was programmed to bypass the critical analysis so that they could just point and shoot, point and shoot, point and shoot without thought as though it's some kind of a video game. Notice the term video game. It certainly has a strong impact on our society as well because that same technology, that same, that same erosion of critical analysis has been put into our video games. And it's also been put into the school systems. The children have lost their ability to critically analyze. They've got information being pumped into their brains at a very, very rapid rate. They're smart kids, but they don't have the capacity and the ability to utilize the information in a creative and effective way. These kids, since they have lost their ability for critical analysis, are doing the same thing that military personnel do when they're turned out onto our streets without being deprogrammed and we're having extreme violence in our school systems. We've got to understand what mind control is, how it works, and what we can do about it. For this reason, I'd like to talk briefly about what my experience is in MKUltra mind control and how it came to be. Because even though my experience is extreme, it certainly gives a clear picture of what mind control is so that you begin to see how it's being used against all of us in some form or another. When I was a really young child growing up in Muskegon, Michigan, this would be the early 60s. I was born in 1957. My father had been sexually abusing me as far back as I can remember. And he often bragged of substituting his penis for my mother's nipple while I was an infant. What this did is create this idea in my mind or change the, the, this whole sexual aspect in my mind to a one of survival akin to eating, drinking, breathing, because that's what that kind of childhood sexual abuse results in. So my sexuality was heightened from a very, very early age, and I also developed what is known as dissociative identity disorder. It was formally termed multiple personality disorder, but has since been redefined because it's not multiple personalities, but the shattering of a personality and a compartmentalization of memory, of trauma, too horrible to comprehend. Childhood sexual abuse is certainly too horrible to comprehend. There was no place for that in my mind. It's not that I could morally judge my father, and it's not that I, I mean, I was just a little bitty, bitty kid. But what I was experiencing was pain and suffocation of that kind of abuse, which caused this dissociative disorder. By the time my father was using me in child pornography at a very, very young age and sending the child pornography through the local Michigan Mafia child pornography ring, mind control was already rampant in this country. Operation Paperclip had brought in the Nazi and fascist scientists, what the Hitler-Himmler research had revealed on multi-generational incest-based families was certainly a strong aspect of the kind of victimization that I and so many, many others went into. 
because it had been determined that anybody that experiences hor horrible abuse will develop this dissociative disorder, which ultimately renders them helpless to affect the situation, change the situation, and makes a person very compliant. When my father sexually abused me, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it at dinner, for example. I didn't think about it when I, I went off to kindergarten. I wasn't thinking about what my father was doing. As a matter of fact, I thought the whole world was that way. I thought it was some kind of a, a, you know, a normal thing. Because it was happening all around me, I didn't know any different. So my brain actually compartmentalized the memory of that abuse so the rest of my mind could function normally and I could go out in society as a normal child. This is called the mind-sane defense to trauma to, too horrible to comprehend. And it's also why so many people are coming forth with repressed memories, usually around the age of 30, when the electrochemical changes in the body start bringing about changes in the neuron pathway firings of the brain and begin to open up the compartmentalized memory of the abuse that people experienced. I never thought to think about the sexual abuse of my father until he came in to sexually abuse me again. As soon as his pants would unzip, my, that part of my brain that knew how to deal with his abuse would actually open back up, the neuron pathways open up, so the part of me that knew how to deal with it would deal with it again as needed, however many times, however often, in whatever way. Then that part of my brain would shut back down so the rest of my mind could function normally. This is a part of our brain that we have a right to know about and a need to know about, that our brains can do something so phenomenal as actually shut down around memory of such horrible abuse. This compartmentalization of memory was what the government was interested in because they figured that if a person couldn't think to bring to mind abuse, they wouldn't be able to think to bring to mind government secrets, government perversions, or anything else they wanted compartmentalized in the brain. For that reason, there was actually a criminal faction in control of our government that's in a, con the same handful of criminals in control of our government today, and they're named in our book, Transformation of America, so you know who these criminals are. But it's the same handful over and over again. It's absurd that we let them stay in power. But nevertheless, the criminal at that time in my hometown area around Muskegon, Michigan, was a local politician by the name of Gerald Ford. This is the same Gerald Ford that went on to become the unelected president of the United States. He headed the Warren Commission that supposedly investigated the Kennedy assassination. Gerald Ford, at that time, was very much interested in mind control, so the local Michigan Mafia child pornography ring was actually being sanctioned. So if that kind of activity to go, could go on, and they could target children like myself, who were so horribly abused, that they would be used in child pornography, and would ultimately be suffering from the dissociative disorder they wanted to use in MKUltra mind control. The Hitler-Himmler research had found that children like that were absolutely ideal, and I was brought up accordingly. The Hitler-Himmler research had certainly expanded by the time that I was in MKUltra mind control, and it continues to expand to date. My own daughter, who was born into MKUltra mind control, un unfortunately, I, I could not prevent her abuse. I certainly didn't contribute to it, but I, didn't, I couldn't prevent it. She was exposed to a high-tech form, a, a, a high form of mind control known as harmonics. And harmonics are very much affecting all of us and is an aspect of mind control that we need to consider and realize is reaching into our brains through music. And we certainly need to be looking at harp. Music 
has such a powerful impact on the brain because of the harmonics that, 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 the word, that carry the words into our brain that oftentimes we'll reflect on, we'll hear a song and we'll, we'll reflect on, oh, I remember where I was at that time, and um, I fell in love at that time. And, and we, we have so many associations that go along with music because of the strong impact it has on our memories, because of the harmonic aspect. And that's just a small little tiny piece of the harmonic technology that they are using in MK Ultra Mind Control and that my daughter was exposed to. My victimization was strictly trauma based though. And when my father was caught sending this pornography through the mails, Gerald Ford approached him and told him that he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would sell me into the project. My father eagerly agreed. He was so happy about the whole idea and believed the government actually condoned child abuse that he went on to have five more children to raise in the project, so there were seven of us in all. And he was never prosecuted. He remains free to date for reasons of national security. I think this begins to show clearly what has happened to our justice system. When we see gross and blatant violations of laws and rights occur in the court systems, particularly where children are concerned. I know right close to here you had a, a major, major occurrence going on with uh, the Marin County Daycare Center because Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino was on the daycare board, the founder of the occult temple set that's proliferating on our military bases head of the Psychological Warfare Division of the Defense Intelligence Agency, one of my primary mind control programmers, and someone who doesn't religiously believe in what he's doing, but certainly understands that trauma, like sexual abuse of children, which he's, in, uh, uh, the Presidio daycare scandal certainly named him in, and Occult trauma are certainly too horrible to comprehend. There's no place for it in a child's brain, in anyone's mind for that matter. Good people don't think to look for that kind of criminal activity even because it's so horrific. Well, when my father agreed to sell me into MK Ultra Mind Control, he agreed to follow the instructions of the criminals that were going to raise me according to MK Ultra specifications. And he began subjecting me to occult trauma. He took me to Mackinac Island, Michigan, which is where the Michigan governor's mansion is located. And when I was a little kid, George Romney was governor at the time, and he was very, very much interested in mind control of the masses not only through the education system, which ranked number one in Michigan during the years that I was growing up, but also he was interested in taking what the Catholics had learned about the effects of trauma on the human mind into the Mormon church. Now, I'm mentioning different aspects of, of religions, and I'm certainly not saying that all Catholics are bad, all Mormons are bad, any more than I'm saying that all politicians and all CIA are bad. There's good and bad in everything. And when we learn to open our eyes to reality and learn what the components are, we learn to start watching their actions rather than listening to their words. It's a lot easier to discern and to make free choices for ourselves rather than blindly following the paths that were led down. But nevertheless, Romney was interested in the effects of, of trauma on the, the human mind and, and bringing it into the school systems. So I was often taken to Mackinac Island, Michigan. And it was there that I met who would become my owner in MK Ultra Mind Control. About the age of 13, I met US Senator Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd has been in office longer than I've been alive. That's kind of absurd in itself. I mean, that's a long time for somebody to be in such a powerful and influential position as Senator Byrd has been in control of our country's purse strings, deciding where money is going to be spent, where, 
how, why, and for ultimately what purpose. And his purpose certainly isn't for the betterment of this country or any of us. It's toward the Adolf, what Adolf Hitler and George Bush termed the New World Order, a robotic enslavement of society that is well on its way to that goal. Senator Byrd's position has been extremely influential for far too long. And any time he even makes a little slip of the tongue like he recently did on TV, making racial slurs and slams against humanity in this country, is usually just covered up and swept aside and we're quickly diverted to something else over here, over there, something else in the media because these guys are real good at pointing the other way and sending us in another direction. It's just like with music when they say, people protest lyrics. Oh, it's so evil and it's so... Well, it's horrible that they're talking about the kind of violence and the kind of, of, of shallow horrors that they are in music that absolutely should not be, but the problem is not in free speech, which is always, always stops any of us from making any progress and cleaning up the music situation. It's in the harmonics. The harmonics are what drives this information into our brains on such a strong level. My music was controlled under MK Ultra Mind Control. I was told what I could listen to. I was told what I could watch on TV. And the shows that I watched were ones that had subliminals in the backgrounds, high-tech themes that could be used and were used throughout my MK Ultra victimization, such as Disney themes predominantly and The Wizard of Oz. Those were, those were some of the main ones. But by controlling my environment, they were controlling my information. They were controlling my perceptions. And their controls were closing in tighter and tighter and tighter on my mind to the point where I lost my capacity to hope that there were good people in this world, that there was some place in the world where people didn't hurt each other, where I lost my ability to even think for myself, to reason or comprehend what was happening. By the time I was 19, I was thrust into MK Ultra Mind Control, worked on a White House Pentagon level during the Reagan Bush administration, carried out many criminal covert operations for the CIA. And I would, I, that's another thing, I'd love to just tell you about so many of them, the, the groundwork for NAFTA, for example, the global education system, that, which as I said is, a, is an enormous passion of mine. The, um, there, there's so many aspects that need to be addressed, but I would encourage you, please look, look at Transformation of America for that information because Transformation of America was originally written for U.S. Congressional Intelligence Oversight, which means that the facts in there have to be uh, validatable, backed up, and the documentation, the proofs on it are so strong that it's a, an important bit of information that's not the easiest to read because of the way it was written. But nevertheless, it certainly outlines the covert operations, the fact that the CIA was involved in the um, so-called war on drugs, which was no more than the CIA eliminating their competition worldwide. Well, they turned our streets into a bloodbath Since, um, since we're here in California, I've, I've got to make mention of, of one little aspect of the so-called war on drugs that disturbs me very, 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 very deeply. I was exposed to many drugs under mind control. Whatever, since I was, my sexuality had been enhanced, the operations that I was used in oftentimes involved some kind of sexual um, perversion, sexual activity, oftentimes, um, compromising videos were actually being filmed through the, the little lens in the ceiling. Because these criminals in control of our country and our information and our technology do not trust each other either. So they blackmail each other and they keep each other in check through 
through those kind of aspects. And that was one, one more part that, that I was um, aware of and exposed to. Well, many of these criminals used various forms of drugs, particularly cocaine and heroin at times, which I knew would be George Bush's drug of choice because of all the criminals that I've been exposed to throughout my victimization, he has absolutely no question about it. The most influential, high up perpetrator of all of them. He's run our country through so many administrations, it's got to stop somewhere. He ran our country. Well, first he began with the United Nations, then he headed our CIA. Then he ran our country through the Reagan administration, through his own, through the Clinton administration, and now look who's in office. From everything that I know and all of my perceptions, the administration that we have in place now is absolutely, 100%, totally controlled by George Bush and the people that he's associated with in this New World Order effort. But it's my experience that George Bush's choice of drugs was, was in the heroin, and I knew that there would be a larger influx of heroin into um, this country, um, although cocaine is certainly still very, very prevalent. And I know that, that the CIA and, and many prominent people were involved in that black budget funding mechanism as well. Of all the drugs I was exposed to, though, there was one that was strictly forbidden, and that was marijuana. Marijuana is strictly forbidden because the effects on the brain actually open those neuron pathways so that any compartmentalization of memory of any kind of trauma or any kind of so-called secret that's compartmentalized in the brain actually begins to erode. Like what happens to people at the age of 30 when their electrochemical changes happen and their mind expands. That is why they don't want to have even medical marijuana for people who have need and proven need for, for it. I think it's absolutely, I'm, I'm not standing here to be pro-marijuana at all. I am here to tell you I am extremely anti, anti-marijuana because I know why this anti-marijuana campaign is out there and the, their efforts to control all of us by making sure that that particular drug is controlled so that no one in any kind of position would have free thought. Now, I'm not saying that is any kind of solution whatsoever to mind control because I'm telling you, this is absolutely, I do not believe it is. I think it, at best it's a band aid. What we need is a solution, and the solution is awareness. Knowledge is our only defense. Awareness is our solution, not not marijuana, but nevertheless, since we're, um, since we're in California, I, I absolutely had to make mention of that. I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty disturbed over the fact that the federal government's making so many efforts to, uh, to, uh, to stop it. My daughter, Kelly, um, was exposed to the most high-tech form of mind control as of 1980. She was born into, born into it, and she was taken to various military and NASA installations for harmonic mind control programming literally since birth, before her brain even had a chance to form. And in essence, the key that locked the doors to her mind needs to be used to unlock it. But the government will not release the technological antidote to a problem they refuse to admit exists, and that's mind control. What Kelly experienced was horrific, and today she's having a very, very difficult time with this ongoing administration. She had hope, she's 21 years old now, and did have the capacity to at least hope that people would wake up in time to make a difference for her and so many other children who are out there in need of help. It's just not happening fast enough. 
from a personal point of view, from the people that I've seen that are, are affected, and people like my daughter who need help, that I look at different cases throughout the, the country that have happened and the events that have happened. I wish people could wake up faster. It would have to be retroactive, I guess, to be fast enough. So that we'd understand what, what the Oklahoma City bombing was all about, what the Joan Benet Ramsey case is all about, what's happening with the school shootings. What was Waco really all about? So many things have been happening in our society for so long. Please take the information that I've been telling you about trauma and apply it to this kind of a situation. Those are traumas that affect us all. Anytime a trauma occurs that affects all of us like that, we're all more highly suggestible more easily led, more receptive to losing more of our rights, and it happens every time. In 1988, Mark rescued my daughter Kelly and I, and I'm extremely fortunate that he did. I was, I was um, 30 years old. I was, I was there. I was just right, right at that age where mind control slaves like myself are eliminated and my death was imminent because of the electrochemical changes that happen that allow for an opening of neuron pathways in the brain I was in deep trouble my daughter's fate would have been worse than death if Mark hadn't come in and rescued Kelly and I in 1988. He took us to the safety and serenity of Alaska. I believed I died and gone to heaven actually because I, I was so close to, to death at that time anyway. But it took a little while before I realized even how old I was and just how close I was to that age of elimination. When Mark rescued Kelly and I, I thought I was still 24 years old, if I could think at all. That was just pretty much my, my standard answer. I, I, I hadn't been able to, to see beyond it until he showed me my driver's license. You know, I mean, I guess I should have looked at that, but I, can't, I couldn't think to do any of that on my own. I had only followed orders, robotically carried out instructions for well over a decade, just as I had been conditioned for. I certainly couldn't think to trust Mark. There's no way. I could only sense that he was someone that I could trust because like, just like a blind person would develop better hearing, I developed heightened senses to make up for my lack of ability to think. And people who abuse children oftentimes abuse animals. And everybody I knew was abusive to animals. I love animals. They're, they're just, they're, they're so precious and they're, they're, they're so innocent. I, I really love animals. But they were abusive to him, which was, again, just an added trauma base to everything else that was happening. In Mark's case, he had some raccoons that he'd rescued. They loved him. I'd, I'd see him hugging him. And I could sense that if the animals could sense he was worthy of trust, it's as though I could sense that as well, and it would be okay. When he rescued Kelly and I, he even rescued the farm animals off the farm that Alex Houston had in, in Goodlettsville, Tennessee, and took the dogs and the, the cows and the guineas and chickens and the, the horses. We just took, took all the animals out of there as well because they, didn't, they certainly didn't need to be abused by Alex Houston the way that they were. And Mark had the insight to be able to see what was happening and to stand up and make a profound difference in what he saw. I'm extremely fortunate for that. Kelly and I felt safe for the first time. We felt love for the first time. And memories of the past began flooding our mind screen. We began to remember what we were supposed to forget. In Kelly's case, since she had been groomed for espionage from a very, very, from in infancy, she had a program in place a, that she would go into respiratory failure and die with the secrets before she could think to reveal them. 
This is a, a programming method that's very common in intelligence these days. When spies used to have to take the old cyanide pill, if they were in a torturous situation or were going to re about to reveal something, that's not necessary anymore. It's automatically, automatically they'll either go into respiratory failure or circulatory failure. We look at special forces and they have, quote, no time to bleed, which is a, a, a program that's put in on such a deep level. Because when you have sleep, food, and water deprivation in association with trauma, the mind is receptive to accepting information, which when put in on a hypnotic or a harmonic level goes in very, very deep, reaches so deep into the subconscious that it can actually influence our breathing and our circulatory system. If we think about that secret that's been suppressed from us, can you imagine what that's going to do for us medically when we realize we have the capacity within us for that kind of, of healing? It's very significant. It's going to absolutely revolutionize and evolutionize the whole medical community. I'm real excited at the prospect of what can be done with it. But I'm deeply disturbed over the fact that they had the respiratory failure program in place on my daughter. And as soon as she began to remember, she went into respiratory failure. When she went into respiratory failure, she was put in an intensive care unit at Humana Hospital in Anchorage, Alaska, where she would not respond to any conventional medical treatment. But she began to respond to the psycho psychological and psychiatric intervention of a psychiatrist who first diagnosed her with multiple personality disorder, as it was still called back then, with active mind control programming. Not everybody's asleep as to the reality of mind control. And my daughter was fortunate that at least someone could see and recognize what was happening to her. I was still completely dissociative of the past. I still didn't know what we were running from who it was that was firing at us, what was happening and why, I didn't know. I only knew that it was something I better remember real fast for my daughter's sake, as well as our own safety and our own survival. Of course, those memories are, are in our book, Transformation of America. Kelly, unfortunately, through a series of very criminal events, ended up in the custody of the state of Tennessee, which was a primary abuse-based force during the Reagan-Bush administration. And she was put in through that system of, that's eroded our justice system so horrible for so long. And the judge presiding over her case was approached by the district attorney, who was very much concerned for Kelly and I. And he told him, he said, you're in violation of this law and this law and this law and this law. And the judge said, laws do not apply in this case for reasons of national security. It's very rare that this is said in open court. It's usually said in closed chambers. But this was said in open court with record of it. This opened doors to ultimately on, on our whole legal situation, but it did not help Kelly or free her from the custody of the state of Tennessee where she stayed right up until she became of legal age. As fast as she became of legal age, she went into an, a safe environment that was kind of just a little holding center where we were going to be able to make a profound difference for her because when she's with me, just my presence triggers memories of the past and what she had been through, the highly influential perpetrators that she's been exposed to, which include George Bush with proof and evidence, that, and, and she's not the only one, and the evidence is overwhelming. And her exposure to George Bush Jr., who at the time of our victimization was learning the ropes and following in daddy's footsteps and making sure that certain things were, were in place, not by his own, his own um, free thought or his own 
um, creativity on making sure things were right, but rather by following orders robotically and doing exactly as he was told, which I'm sure he's still doing today. But the fact of the matter remains, my daughter Kelly was ex exposed to him. So as fast as Kelly had that little peek at freedom, that little peek at, at, at being able to maybe hope for a future, George Bush went into office, junior, supposedly. And it, it's had a very, very adverse effect on Kelly, and she's not been herself since. And I'm deeply concerned for her welfare and hope that people will wake up and we can make enough of a difference, not only for her, but for so many others that are in the same kind of position under the control of these criminals who continue to run our country right in to the New World Order controls. I'm deeply concerned for Kelly's future and whether or not she'll even have one. When Mark and I were speaking out in 19, in 1992, we were out in the Marin County area and a woman, the whole community came out. This was out in, out in Santa Rosa in, in back then because of Michael Aquino's influence on the Marin County Daycare Center. The whole community turned out and it was a very moving event. Our book hadn't even been released at all. We'd been teaching law enforcement and mental health about mind control and that recovery is possible. Back then, I talked to so many psychiatrists um, who were actually earning educational credits, learning how to recover and what the recovery processes are for the numerous victims that they were seeing coming through their offices. I spoke to, to so many that I, I believe I've been looked at by more psychiatrists than, than anyone ever has. And um, boy, man, they have really been kept in the dark for a long time. Um, they're beginning to open their eyes to the fact that the information was suppressed through the American Psychiatric Association back when Dr. Ewing Cameron, who worked directly under the CIA, was caught using mind control in Montreal, Canada on, on patients, was um, very much instrumental in suppressing pertinent facts on mind-brain function as well as what mind control was all about, right from the onset. So mental health really, really had a long way to go. They still have a long way to go, but they have since reorganized. Um, they, they've got some reorganization going on through the International Society for the Study of Dissociation. They've got They've renamed multiple personality disorder to dissociative identity disorder, and it is widely known that recovery from the most Horrific robotic forms of mind control is certainly possible. And that was a, an enormous accomplishment that Mark and I were making back in, in 1992, as well as to the border guards who were seeing so many mind control slaves hauling cocaine across border, especially Mexico, and wondering why every time they made an arrest that the whole thing was covered up for so-called reasons of the national security. And they wanted some answers, too. So we were speaking out to them as well. That was just about all we had done back at that point in time when we ended up in Marin County, speaking to the whole community of people who had turned out to hear what we had to say and to know that hope was a very, very real, real possibility. Recovery was certainly probable. And there was a woman. I'll never forget, who, who came up to me out of the crowd. She had three children that were being used in mind control. She had lost three children through a corrupt court system because of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino's involvement, the fact that national security was slapped on the whole thing. The Satanism was very much a part of it. And this woman was in her last days of dying from cancer, 
She had no hair. And, and she came up and cried, and she said, I can die in peace now because people will know, and it will help my children. That's a long time ago that that, that woman had had that kind of hope and shared my hope for my own daughter that people would wake up in time. Well, it certainly is time that people wake up. We need to realize not only that aspect, but one other part as well. We hear so much about the, the aliens and, and all that, that are happening, alien mind control and everything else. It's very much used as a trauma base for mind control to render people totally helpless, to feel like they can't make a difference. Realize that mind control extends into this area. Realize that the small handful of criminals in control of our country and our information and our technology have kept it suppressed for so long that when it does come out, it does look alien to all of us. It's the most strong consideration that I would encourage each and every one of you to realize there is no boxed information. There is no easy answer. There is no absolute on any of it. And I'm not saying the aliens don't exist because it's not that simple. My experience with George Bush included him doing the, the uh, lizard projection thing, which at that time he actually used a harmonic generator to do it. But why did he choose that theme? Why did he have to do Are they losing their ability? Did they ever have an ability? But are they losing their ability to be able to transform because they're in this physical plane? What is the difference on that? I have a lot of questions. The criminals that I was exposed to talked about aliens and the alien technologies and aspects of it quite frequently, most often in terms of interdimensional aspects and time travel. Oftentimes referring to aliens more as us in the future, technology, being from the, the, our, our own future. I don't think that's all of the answer either. Again, it, it doesn't fit in a box, folks. We've got to expand our minds. Just like I had to expand out of those little compartments in my brain, we all need to expand our thought. I only had in those little compartments my own experience, and that's all I could see while I was under, under program or carrying out from that little tiny area. It was a narrow, narrow vision. And I see so many people operating through that same narrow vision today based on what they were told on TV or what they've been educated in school when in fact so much pertinent information has been suppressed that we need to begin to look beyond what we think we know. Are there lizards? I don't know. It wasn't my experience. But I'm certainly not going to say I know it all. But I am going to tell you that these criminals oftentimes talk about the transdimensional aspects and the time travel part. And it's something that I think we need to look at and consider, as well as the other possibilities out, that are out there. They know that if we don't have the answers, we're afraid. And if we're afraid, we're more easily controlled. We have nothing to be afraid of. There's no fear involved in this whatsoever. There's nothing new under the sun. With all that you think you know, and all that I've talked about today, this is just one more piece of a whole overall puzzle of a much bigger picture and a much bigger effort that's happening in our world. But it is our world. And we do have the ability to affect it. It is not beyond our realm to affect. All we need to do is open our eyes and raise awareness. 95% of the people want to be led by 5%. It only takes 3% of that 5% to make a positive difference. Not only for my daughter, not only for that that woman's children, who, the woman who is dying of cancer. Not only for those in the military, not only for all oh, the poor Vietnam vets, 
that have just longed for understanding for so long, wanted someone to know the horror of what they experienced, the manipulation of the minds. Our school children, what's happening to them in the education system? These are areas that we can affect positive change and move into an area that is going to allow all of us to go into self-healing. Get rid of doctors. Get rid of lawyers. We don't need any of that stuff. We don't need a lawyer to tell us what the truth is. <laughs> the best lawyers are those who know how to manipulate the minds of the people. So we need to be aware of mind control, how it's affecting society and all of us, and begin to take back control of our world and control of our lives. Spread the word. Thank you very much.